Slog FPV here. I was looking for a tweener FPV quad between uh, the uh, Tiny Whoop class 65 millimeter like this uh, Acro B and you know a larger three inch uh, micro drone like this uh, XJB 145. Um, I have some friends at work that are just now getting into flying um, quads that are FPV quads. They come from you know the DJI uh, videography side of things so um, currently they're flying this style and uh, so what I found and I also uh, was looking for the same thing for myself uh, a uh, solution that looked pretty pretty nice uh, it is the Falcon 15 by T-Motor uh, it's a 95 millimeter diagonal it uh, weighs 83 grams, that's uh, without a battery, um, with the receiver and the, the battery strap. It has two millimeter base plate and arms right here. I measured them at two millimeter. Uh, it, does, it does have the T-Motor. Uh, it's the F-15-6000. They're... Uh, 6,000 kV motors. Uh, the props that come on it are the gem fan at 2040 props. They're a two bolt, two bolt prop. Uh, the camera is an all-in-one uh, camera with a VTX. Uh, it has a 25 milliwatt uh, VTX on it. Um, it does support OSD. It the stack is a 20 millimeter. Let me get this uh, battery strap out of the way. The uh, the stack in here is a 20 millimeter uh, stack. It does have a four in one ESC 15 amp that supports D shot 600. Uh, the flight controller is an F3 Omnibus. It does include a barometer. Uh, it does come with a three pin cable that you'll use to connect to your receiver. I'm happening, I happen to be using the XM Plus um, FR Sky. Uh, it worked out perfectly. Where I position the FR Sky XM Plus, it fits great in between uh, these stays where the uh, screws screw in to hold the canopy in place. I just used some double-sided sticky tape to position it and it fits perfectly in between these two you know where the screws go in uh, you can't use the heat shrink on this because if you do then it won't fit nicely in between the two but uh, it sticks pretty hard you can get the 3m uh, clear double-sided sticky tape from Home Depot Amazon a lot of places carry that uh, let's see also um, it does support smart audio, although um, which you can use to control the VTX channel. Uh, it doesn't have in the uh, three-pin cable. Obviously, um, you're not going to be able to get uh, uh, telemetry information because there's no uh, smart port telemetry connection here. Um, you could possibly use UART2 and use soft serial if you wanted to do a RXSR. Um, I didn't feel like I needed uh, all that with this particular drone. <coughs> Excuse me. So I went ahead and just uh, went with the XM Plus receiver. I mean, you still can control the VTX um, from, from uh, your goggles, which is pretty nice. Let's see. Uh, also, what I did um, as far as routing the diversity antennas for the receiver, um, you can see here, I just, uh, again, mounted the the receiver here, the XM Plus, and just routed the antennas to the back here, used some zip ties that I just heat shrinked on to each one of these arms. Um, that worked out. I was getting good reception by doing it that way. Uh, but overall, um, I really like this this uh, drone. It, uh, I think it really does fit the bill. Uh, you know, as being a, a, a tweener between you know, like a tiny whoop and you know, a larger three inch or five inch, you can still do 
um, acrobatic moves. I wasn't getting washouts. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is go over how I configured this thing up. Um, I uh, one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, the three-pin harness cable harness. It just plugs right in here. You can kind of you can kind of see it right here. It uh, the, the 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 header on the right is for the VTX, and the header on the left is the three-pin uh, that you just have to solder onto your receiver. It would have been nicer if it would have been a bind and fly uh, for those beginners that you know don't know how to solder. But with just three three pins to solder, if you're using an XM Plus, it's it's pretty simple, simple thing to do. And, and soldering irons are cheap. So um, with that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about how you configure this thing up in Betaflight. Now I'm gonna quickly go through um, how I set up the Falcon 15 in the Betaflight configurator. Um, this isn't a comprehensive how to set up a quad from scratch. There's some good videos out there. Um, uh, Joshua Bardwell has one uh, that's good to watch. This is just what I changed from the default setting. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is, uh, if you're flying angle mode, you're gonna wanna calibrate the accelerometer. Make sure your quad is on a flat surface and then uh, you just hit calibrate. And then you're gonna to wanna to go to the ports tab. Mine was set up correctly. You just wanna make sure that UART 1 has TBS smart audio enabled. Then also UART 3 um, is uh, the serial RX is turned on. And then you're gonna to wanna to go to the configuration tab. First thing I did was turn up the idle, idle speed or the idle percentage value from 4.5 percent to six percent. Uh, the next thing I did was change the maximum arm angle. Um, I set it to 180 so that if you're caught in a tree you can arm your quad and uh, maybe able to knock it out of the tree by blipping the throttle. Uh, I also turned up the gyro update frequency and PID loop frequency to 4k 4k. Uh, they were too low. Um, the accelerometer uh, you need to turn that on if you're going to be flying angle mode. If you want the barometer enabled, you're going to need to turn that on, and then uh, you'll see this little icon turned on. Um, it's pretty nice to have uh, you know, your altitude in your OSD um, display. Uh, I'm running the XM Plus, so uh, for me, I needed to turn on serial-based receiver. As you can see, that supports SBUS, and then uh, serial receiver provider, it's SBUS. And then uh, I didn't really change anything here. Um, these were already turned on. Um, Anti-gravity was turned on. Dynamic filter was turned on. Uh, some people like to leave uh, turn air mode on all the time. I have it on a switch. Um, this is your beeper configure configuration. Uh, it came with all these turned on. Um, I turned some things off, turn on other things. Uh, for example, I don't want the... Uh, beeper beeping um, when I'm uh, plugged into the USB and I'm on the bench, so I turn that off. And some of these I just turned off because like here, arming GPS fix, beep special tone when arming the board and GPS has a fix. I don't have GPS, so I just, not that it matters, I just turn it off. Then you're gonna wanna save and reboot. Um, I'm not gonna do that since I'm already configured. I didn't make any changes in the, the power battery management. Um, these values were fine for me. Uh, let's see, PID tuning. I basically just kept it at uh, the um, beta flight defaults. Um, the only thing I changed was the rates. Uh, these are my rates. I mean, it's a personal preference. You can try them out, see if you like them. Um, mine are pretty boring. I don't have any RC Expo. And, you know, basically it's 0 0.8, 0 0.8 on my super rates and 0.75. I do have my rates on a uh, switch um, that you can, you know, uh, Google that and you can see, you know, ways to set up a, you know, a variable rate switch. Um, I typically fly most of the time with these rates turned on. Uh, I didn't really change anything else. The D set point weight, I just left at 0.6. Anti gravity was already set at 5 and 350 for the threshold. That worked fine. So everything else, uh, TPA breakpoint, I didn't change that. So everything else is pretty much uh, default. And the filter settings, I didn't change anything there. I just left it with the defaults. Uh, going to the receiver tab, 
Um, I'll go ahead and plug, turn on my receiver now. Welcome to OpenTX. And my controller. All right. Um, so you're going to want to make sure your channel map is set correctly. Um, mine needs to be AETR1234, which is pretty common. Um, I have a, a Tyrannus Plus. Um, so um, that works with, uh, with my radio. Uh, let's see. Uh, another thing I changed was um, I enabled RSSI channel. So basically I'm using, uh, I flashed my XM Plus um, for channel 16. And if you do that, you need AUX 12 enabled as your RSSI channel. So that's your, basically your signal strength, um, your radio signal strength. So um, that's pretty convenient to have that in your OSD. And if you can see here, um, you can see AUX 12 is moving around a little bit. Uh, let's see, as far as a mode, a mode switch and an arm switch, I'm using AUX 2 switch as a uh, arming switch. Um, I'm using a um, three position switch for my modes, which is on AUX 1. So you can see three different uh, values there. Uh, as I, I do, like I said, I have a rate switch. Uh, typically, most people don't mess around with having a rate switch, but I have one set up. I do have a uh, turtle mode uh, flip over crash set up on, a, on another switch, which is AUX 3. And then also my beeper is on that as well, on that three position switch. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, and that's about it as far as uh, my receiver setup. And then going to the modes tab, um, I'm using again AUX2 as my arm switch. You can see that. Um, I have my angle uh, set at the bottom. So, so in the bottom position, it's angle mode. I go to the center position. That turns on Acro Trainer. Um, I don't use Acro Trainer. I was just a, this is just an example. I think it would be a good idea if uh, you know if you you maybe could start out with angle mode, but then transition to Acro Trainer mode, and then eventually to to Air mode, or which is uh, I have on that Aux One switch as well, which is air slash acro mode so that's what I typically fly in uh, as far as flip over on crash um, that was my aux 3 so you can see that turns that on if you're flipped over you know I can use that to flip it upright uh, anything else uh, that's about it oh yeah we already talked about the beeper So um, that's also on the three position aux three switch. Uh, motors, I didn't have to do anything with that. Um, the direction of the props were all correct. OSD, um, I like having RSSI value. Um, so that's enabled. Uh, the main battery voltage, I have that turned on. Um, I have the timer for um, flight time. I have the fly mode stability. Um, acro, um, acro trainer. Uh, have the VTX channel. It's good to be able to see, you know, what your VTX channel is that you're currently uh, transmitting on. Uh, this is a new thing for me. Altitude. Um, I thought that was pretty slick. You know, you can look at that and make sure that you're below 400 feet. Um, I also have the warnings enabled, and that's about it. So uh, as far as the lead strip. I just left it at factory defaults, um, but you can you can customize that. Uh, with that, um, I'll go ahead and uh, show you some flight footage with uh, you know two different batteries. I had a 2S and a 3S battery that I was using, and uh, so hopefully you can see how this thing flies. It was fairly windy when I flew it, and uh, did quite well. Thanks for watching. 
So one of the reasons why you get the Falcon 15 um, is, you know, it's a little heavier than a Tiny Whoop class, so it should be able to fly better in a little bit windier conditions. So uh, today I'm going to take it out. You can see it's uh, fairly windy out here. I guess uh, 10 mile an hour, 15 mile an hour winds. Uh, so we're going to see how well the Falcon 15 runs in this kind of conditions. So here are my final thoughts on the Falcon 15. I'm gonna go over the do's, don'ts, pros, and cons. So the do's, you're gonna to wanna to replace the battery strap. It's not the best. Um, I'll link the battery strap that I used below. Um, they just have a strip of Velcro that came with it and that just won't cinch down the battery tight enough. Um, again, you know, route your receiver uh, antenna the way I did here. I mean, it's pretty typical. You can route it different ways, but you wanna make sure it doesn't get into your props. Um, you will have to do some PID tuning if you're going to be flying 2S. I am going to be flying 3S. I think 3S is what I would recommend. And I would recommend these uh, 
GMB 450 Ma batteries. They're three cell. Um, they're fairly cheap, and uh, you know they uh, fly great. Um, they work great on this this particular quad. Uh, the don'ts uh, don't upgrade to Beta Flight 3.5. What's happening is on all F3 flight controllers, there's not enough memory. So to add new features, um, Betaflight uh, developers are taking away some features like GPS. And one of the other ones that's uh, pertinent to this is the LED control. So if you upgrade to 3.5, you're not going to have LEDs. Uh, as far as the pros, I think this thing flies great on 3S. Um, I was flying it in higher winds and it did great. 2S it struggled a little more in higher winds. I like that it has prop guards. Um, that saved me. Um, I was making a turn. You can see it in one of the videos where I was uh, turning and then I was going backwards and um, you can see the willow branches that normally if I would have got into it would have you know got tangled up in it. But with the prop guards you know it just you know brushed off the, the branches and, and worked out great. I like that it has smart audio VTX control. I think it's lightweight and uh, also the camera, as you can see, is uh, really well protected. So you're not gonna be breaking the camera. I like that it has an XT30 connector. Um, and overall, I think it's a good, good, good beginner drone. Um, you know, I think it does fit the bill of uh, being a tweener between, you know, a, a tiny whoop and you know a larger three inch racing class and five inch racing class drone the cons it uh again beta flight has removed some features um it should have been a bind and fly um if it's targeted for beginners um it's not a big deal you only have to solder on three wires onto your receiver but still you know for beginners that might uh, put them off um, the barometer is kind of a gimmick. You really need to use iNav if you want to use altitude hold. Um, also, the last thing, I think the parts are going to be hard to find. Um, I didn't see any spare parts, but uh, maybe they'll come out later. So with that, um, you know, thanks for watching, and I give this, uh, this uh, Falcon F-15 a thumbs up.